this absolutely massively long car is the rather lovely Rolls-Royce Phantom. Apparently this is the finest motor vehicle ever created. And to find out if that's true, in this video I'm going to talk you around the exterior design like a hob. Show you inside. Occasionally you see a shooting star as well. See how luxurious it is. Oh. Talk you through some of the upgrades that will avoid certain areas such as the Midlands. Take it for a drive. She does not get a move on when you put your foot down. Be taken for a drive. And if it gets damaged now, I ain't driving and I don't have to pay. And seeing as this one here with options only costs £400,000, I'm of course going to poke it with a stick. Yes, they are, Matthew. They are real indeed. Now, before we get into the video, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. The more subscribers I have, the more likely it is that I can review cars such as this rather than just mainstream stuff. However, if you are after a mainstream car and want to see how much money you can save on it, click on the pop-out banner up there to download the new CarWow app. There you can browse through reviews and various offers and deals on cars. And if you're not thinking about buying a car, then tell your friend to download it. All right? Good. Thank you. Let's go on with the video. Let's kick off this review by talking about the Phantom's design. Now, I don't actually have much to say because it pretty much speaks for itself. It's very, very recognisable. There's also lots of shiny chrome about the place. Down the side, it's long, as I mentioned in the intro of this video. In fact, this car is the short version. It's only 5.76 metres long. You can get one that's 25 centimetres longer. I don't know why you need that, but you can. To put that into perspective, a BMW 7 Series long wheelbase is half a metre shorter than this shortest version of the Phantom. It's insane! Then you come to the front, look at that face. That face just says, get out of my way, old boy. Absolutely imposing, isn't it? And you can play the grill like a harp. Yes, this is a very serious review. I'm sure I'll be getting another Rolls Royce to review soon. Anyway, there's so much more to show you on this car. Here on the inside, the Phantom feels just as humongous. Look at this dash. It's like the bridge of a ship. It is huge. And then there's the quality of the materials, everything like the leather or the seats. Oh, it's all just so glorious. There's metal switches and bits and pieces about the place. Gorgeous. And even the knobs that you turn, they're surrounded in leather. So you don't have to touch any horrible plastic if you don't want to. And the plastic that there is, is lovely as well. Do you know what? I can't imagine that being in heaven feels any better than being sat in a phantom. I find it really funny that while this car has an old school style analog clock, the dials for driving are digital, though they are meant to look like analog dials. The infotainment system is nice and clear, and it's actually BMW's iDrive because obviously BMW own Rolls Royce. Super easy to navigate, very easy to use, lovely jubbly. What I do like is that when you turn the car off, you can then fold this away so it's not on show, looking all unsightly. And when you lock the car, check this out. The screen hides away. And then when you come back into the car and turn it on, it pops back out again. Welcome to Phantom. And the whole thing is kept behind this glass screen. It's almost like a display cabinet on an expensive piece of furniture. It's lovely. Obviously the best seats in the house are those in the back of the Phantom. And I feel I should do the normal car wow practicality stuff, so yay, headroom's good. Knee room, yeah, that's really good as well. Not sure why you need the longer version. This is fine. How's this not gonna be fine? Look, Isofix points under there. If you wanna carry a baby, you can carry three people in the back at once and because the car's wide, there's lots of shoulder room and there's still decent headroom here and there's lots of foot space, so that's all good or you can fold this down and go like this. Lovely, yeah, it's all, all perfectly spacious. Great. And I guess I should give a special mention to these seats because they're unexplainably comfy. I don't know what is special about them, but I haven't sat in seats that are as comfy as these. N not anywhere, not just a car, just anywhere. 
it's amazing. Anyway, let's let's carry on. Check out the boat. Computer says no. It's got a child lock on. All right, and let's tick off the boot section of the review. Yes, this may be a saloon, but look at the size of that opening. It is huge. There is a bit of a bootlet though to lift things over, but it doesn't matter because it's an opportunity for Rolls-Royce to put this lovely bit of shiny metal there, which just looks gorgeous. The carpeting in the boot actually is better than the carpets in my house. Then there's the space itself. So the capacity is 550 litres. So that's bigger than a Bentley Mulsanne's, a Mercedes Maybach, so BMW 760 LIs, an Audi 8 long wheelbase. It's absolutely huge, which is handy because you could fill it full of money, then drive it to Switzerland to put it into your Swiss bank account to keep the taxman's grubby paws off it. Excellent. Speaking of tax, now I mentioned the car's price earlier, £300,000 for £400 with options. That's excluding VAT. Anyway, that's all the normal review stuff dealt with. Let's crack on with loads and loads of cool things about this car because there's just so many. Rolls-Royces have always been about effortless progress. And this Phantom is no exception. It's got a 6.75 twin turbo V12 with 570 horsepower, 900 newton meters of torque and go from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Best thing about this engine though is how smooth it is. So here is a pound coin. I'm going to place it on the top of the engine. It's not moving at all. But what will happen if I rev the engine? Surely it's just going to fall off and end up somewhere down there. Maybe get caught in some ancillary and cost a lot to repair. Let's find out anyway. Is it still there? Is it still there? Oh my God, that's incredible. The exhaust on this car look really cool. Unfortunately though, this is just a facade. There's two actual exhaust pipes in there which are much smaller. But at least those are real. Aren't they stick of truth? Yes they are Matthew, they are real indeed. It never lies. If you pay an extra £10,000, you can get the optional shooting star headliner. So the roof is actually filled with little LEDs and it actually takes two men nine hours to fit them all. The constellation that you see here is that over the Rolls-Royce factory in Goodwood, but if you want, they can do any constellation and you can have up to 1,340 little LEDs in the roof, though if you do that, it can take more time. So two men, 13 hours to fit. Occasionally, you see a shooting star as well. I'm gonna be lucky. I'm gonna be lucky. Come on, shooting star. Sorry, it does do it though. The Phantom has umbrellas mounted in its rear doors. Now, if you've got a Skoda, you're probably going, yeah, well, my car's got that. It may have, but Skoda ripped off Rolls-Royce. And the way this all operates is just so much more luxurious. You press a button to release it. You get a full-size umbrella, not one of the short, cheap things you get in the Skoda. And the actual mechanism of the umbrella is just so glorious to use. Oh, 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 yeah. I mean, it just feels so super expensive. In fact, it feels more expensive than a whole Skoda car, actually. Ooh, burn! Nailed you, buddy! So, yes, yeah, Skoda owners. <laughs> Rolls Royces are all about transporting you along in utter tranquility. That's why this car is fitted with 130 kilograms of sound insulation. You get double glazing all round, six millimetres thick, and I'll show you just how quiet this car is now. So, Jack, you just bought a BMW E36 M3. Tell me about that car. So it's a 1994, it's Hellrock Red. It's got gas coilovers, it's got semi-slicks, it's got a roll cage, half the interior is stripped. Yeah, 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 Jack, you just carry on. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, very interesting, mate. They're so boring. I'm glad I can't hear any of that. Every Phantom gets these electrically operated and very sturdy feeling picnic tables. But for an extra £8,000, you can upgrade to the rear theater. So you have like telly and stuff like that. But also you can operate the car's infotainment system and the satellite navigation. So you can input a route here from the back and override that in the front. So it means that you don't even have to speak to your driver. You can just do it through the sat nav. Also, you can set up the sat nav so it will avoid certain areas, such as the Midlands, maybe. And then there's the points of interest, which not only have things like petrol stations and stuff like that, but also Rolls-Royce specific points of interest, such as the Polo, the Heliport, 
and probably bespoke jewelers. Once you've done all that, you just press the button and make it all go away again. Go away, I don't want to see you. Thank you. As you can see, the rear doors on this car open backwards and to 90 degrees. Makes it dead easy to get in and out. They are heavy doors though, so they're quite a weight to shut, but don't worry because every door on this car can be closed electrically at the press of a button. Bye bye. If you buy a Phantom, you get to choose from 20 different types of leather, 17 different wood options. You can have logos all over the place. Get these oh, super comfy pillows for the back seats. In fact, the back seats can come as this three bench or you can get a two bench. And if you want, you can have a champagne cooler in there somewhere. I don't have it though. Probably just as well, I'm doing dry January. Now, I wouldn't say that people that buy Rolls Royces are vain, but the car does come with the largest vanity mirrors I've ever seen. In fact, there's an extra mirror just on the side as well. Look, so you can check out your better side. You can raise and lower the Rolls Royce mascot on the bonnet from here inside the cabin. She's known as the spirit of ecstasy, though if you were raving in the 90s, you might want to call her the spirit of MDMA, which would be appropriate because she's up one moment, then she's down, then she's up again, then she's down, then she's up, and she's down. Maybe she's up again, and then down for a very long time. The Phantom gets self-leveling air suspension as standard, and you can raise or lower it between three different settings. So I'm gonna put it in the lower setting so it looks a bit more slammed and cooler. Also, the car has something called Flag Bearer, and it uses two cameras in the windscreen which read the road ahead and can spot bumps, and it will slacken or stiffen up the suspension as needs be to improve comfort. The car also gets rear wheel steering to make it a little bit more manoeuvrable considering how long it is. Then there's active anti-roll bars to stop it leaning and wallowing about through the bends. There is luxury everywhere you look in this car. Check out the standard floor mats. Look at that. It's like I'm actually stroking a sheep. Then there's aluminium everywhere. Look, even for the foot vents, the seat slider, the weight of these solid air vents is incredible. Even the speaker for the Bluetooth in the front is made out of aluminium. There's so many interesting and bespoke little features on this car. For instance, the switch with the headlights is very unusual, as is the joystick to control the mirrors. Then there's a the climate control, so you slide these dials, whether you want it cooler or hotter. There's no actual temperature setting, you just do it by how you feel. Then there's the actual rev counter. It doesn't have revs, it has power reserve and it sort of works in reverse. How very rolls. The centre hub caps for the wheels remain upright, which is very pleasing for my OCD. Though if you want these particular wheels, the 22 inches, they're an extra six and a half grand. If you've been out late visiting your mistress or toy boy and you need to get back without being noticed, then you can turn off the headlights and use the night vision camera to sneak back up your driveway without being caught. <laughs> Wherever you see an image of a car within the Phantom, it's always of a Phantom. So these buttons down here, this button here, it's the Phantom from above. On the infotainment screen, it's always a Phantom but you can just look throughout it and you will always find a Phantom. And with the 360 degree reversing camera, you also get a Phantom. And it's the same color as the car you're actually driving. Though they haven't gone the whole hog because this is a two-tone car with the orange pinstripe and I can't see them on that. Yes, I think I'm gonna to have to send this car back. You can see there's loads of stainless steel fitted to the exterior of the Phantom, but this is one single piece. Look at it, all the way to here. And that is the largest seamless bit of stainless steel fitted to any motor car. Rolls-Royce clearly knows its customer base because under here you have a cigarette lighter and an ashtray. You can also get the car with curtains for all the rear windows so scumbags can't look in at you. Of course, you get things like heated and ventilated seats and massage function, and even a footrest that rises about the floor so you can put your feet up while you're chuffing on your big Cuban cigar. One of the great things about Rolls-Royce is that it's pretty much infinitely customizable. You could choose a color and take it to Rolls-Royce and they will mix that up into a paint and put it on your car if you want. However, if you don't want to do that. They have 44,000 of their own colors to choose from. This gunmetal is one of them and it'll cost you 
£7,000. But if you want the two-tone effect like this, that's an extra £17,500. This little pinstripe here, that's £1,300. Not even painted, it's stuck on. It's madness almost. And it's, of course, you're totally loaded, which Rolls-Royce customers are. This car is fitted with the upgraded £7,000 bespoke Rolls-Royce audio. No, it really is bespoke. Look, it says so on there. Look, there. Also, the car somehow uses its sill as a subwoofer to help increase the bass within the car. No idea how that works, but if you know, you can bore everyone else in the comments box below. If you find this area of the dash a little bit dull, don't worry. Rolls-Royce can commission an artist to put a piece of artwork behind there for a cost, of course. Obviously, this is an amazing car with so many cool features. However, I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't find a few slightly annoying things about it. So the first is the economy. Obviously, 17 miles per gallon is pretty poor. Now, if you can afford one of these, you don't really care about fuel prices. The issue is having to stop to fill up if you're driving it yourself. So you have a 100 litre fuel tank, which means you can do about 370 miles till you have to get out of petrol station and rub shoulders with the ugh, general public. And if you are filling it up yourself, look at this. All of a sudden, the car feels very, very cheap, just like any other. That's a horrible fuel filler cap. They should have made it out of myrrh. If you're closing the door electrically on the inside of the car, you have to actually press and hold the button down for it to close fully. Whereas here on the outside of the car, you just press it once and then it does it. Why don't they just do that on the inside as well? It's just like, duh. The attention to detail on this car is incredible. But then there's these weird reflectors on the corners of the car. They look horrendous, like they've just been stolen from someone's bush bike. I don't know why they're there. It's probably due to some weird regulation in the United States. I mean, that's a bit bonkers, really, because it's not like you're going to miss a six metre long Rolls Royce, are you? The key for the Phantom is rather nice. And as you can see, you can have some leather on it to match the pinstriping or interior highlights of your car if you want to. Now, if this runs out of battery and you need to get into the car, you do have the normal blade key and you put it in there. It's just a shame though, you're never really going to use this and then that's on view the whole time. I'm sure they could have figured a way to cover that up or had it hidden away somewhere. It just looks unsightly and a bit old fashioned. Well, the door bins in the back are a decent size. Those in the front, not so much. What are you going to do if you're giving your show for the day off? You have to hire someone else to hold your bottle of water while you drive. While you can have up to 64 different colours of interior ambient lighting with a Mercedes, with this Rolls, there's only two, either warm white or cool white. I want more choice. I have searched the interior of this car high and low to find some cheap bits of trim, and there's only four. It's the indicators, the little lever for the electric steering wheel, the gear selector end, and that for the wipers. Basically, all the things the driver will touch. So is that the owner just trying to keep the driver in his place so he doesn't get above his station? This clock is a £4,000 option. Now, the problem isn't the fact that I'm having to pay for a clock, it's the fact that it's not expensive enough. You can get a upgraded clock in a Bentley Bentayga that costs £120,000. I mean, come on Rolls Royce, how am I supposed to get rid of all my billions? This is my first time driving the eighth generation of the Rolls-Royce Phantom. The steering, look at this. Oh, I can control it with my forefinger and thumb. In fact, I could probably do it with my little finger. Look, there we go. I'm steering 400,000 pounds with my little finger. One thing you really notice about this car is just how smooth it is. This road is awful, actually. When you drive up it in normal cars, it's just so bouncy. In fact, I can illustrate how good this car suspension is now because I'm going to take a little detour and drive over some cobbles because I can do. So here comes some cobbles. This should be bad, but ah, no, it just soaks it up. Lovely. I think I'm going to go do it again because it was just so amazing. Come on, cobbles, do your worst. Oh, here we go. More cobbles. Nah, hardly felt them. It's as though my entire body has been injected with Novocaine.
everything's just numb. Now, driving purists might be thinking, oh, numb, I like to feel driving. But that is not supposed to be the case with the Rolls Royce. It's supposed to be effortless. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be smooth. And indeed, it very much is so in this car. One thing that is a little bit worrying though is when you have to cut across the road like that because you've got about four meters of car still behind you so if someone comes whizzing around a corner you could be in some trouble well they could and their insurance company because if they hit this their premiums are certainly going to go up then there's pulling out a junction such as this which is a slight scary oh god but thankfully there's plenty of power Ooh. oh oh she does not get a move on when you put your foot down it's not like a Bentley, the way it wallops you. Something like a Bentley Flying Spur is just like a drag racer off the line. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. Oh no, the Rolls-Royce, what it does, it moves away quite smoothly and steadily, and then it builds its pace more as a surge rather than a wallop in the back. It is, without doubt, fast though, when you need it to be. And when you don't, it's just great for cruising around. Can you hear that? So much noise is there. The tyres on this car are actually filled with foam to help absorb road noise so it doesn't intrude into the cabin. And then you can just waft along in perfect tranquility. Just looking at that pretty lady just on your bonnet. Oh, it's almost like you're flying like her actually. It's gliding above the road surface. Relaxing. This gearbox helps. Eight speeds. It feels like one speed to me. It's just seamless. So smooth the way it changes. It's quite handy that this particular car has a heads-up display because I have no idea what speed I'm doing and you're constantly having to look down at the dials to check because you could be doing 100 or 40, it just all feels the same. So it's handy to have it right on the road in front of you. It means you don't end up breaking the law because I'll tell you what, this car will be pretty conspicuous for the police. Needless to say, driving this thing along on a motorway is an absolute dream. It's all right on a twisty road as well, as long as you don't get too carried away, it will hold on to the road despite its huge bulk. In town, it's a little bit of a mixed experience. So many roundabouts, you can just go over them as if they're not there. Same with speed humps. In fact, I really didn't notice that at all. But then you start to get a little bit concerned just by the sheer size of this thing. So I'm heading into town now to do some essential shopping and We'll see how I get on. Right, where do I need to go? Is it this way? Is it this way? Um, no, I'm going round and round. Ah. Now this could be a lot worse if I didn't have that rear wheel steering. I can just about circumnavigate this. Oh, got away with that. <laughs> Quite surprised it did that. Thought I'd have to do a three point turn. Ah, here's the co-op. I don't know how many Rolls-Royce owners shop at the co-op. Oh, look at that, but people wait for you. Look, yes, thank you, yes, yes, thanks. Oh, bugger. Um, I think I'll just leave this here. I'm in a Rolls-Royce after all. Maybe I can get someone else to move it for me. I think the person over there is getting a bit annoyed. Oh well. Oh, and he wants to get out as well. Ooh. I'm gonna let someone else take over for a bit because I wanna try it in the back seats. Ha <laughs> ha. Excuse me everyone, sorry. Sorry people. I'm in a Rolls Royce. Um, driver, can you get me out of here please? I'm starting to feel really stupid. It's actually a good opportunity to try this car out and see what it's like from the back seat. Also, it's always better to let someone else do the tricky manoeuvre <laughs> in a car that's almost six metres long. Because this <laughs> oh, is a little bit frightening. Also means that if it gets damaged now, I ain't driving and I don't have to pay. Someone else does. Oh, and chauffeur, don't expect me to help because you know, you're supposed to be qualified to do this sort of thing. Take us back. Let's get away from the car and go somewhere nicer. Somewhere like Waitrose, maybe. Oh, oh, this is better, actually. It's quite a pleasant car to drive, but this is what the Phantom is all about. It's about being sat in the back seats and someone chauffeuring you to wherever it is 
you need to be. Now, sometimes when you're in the back of cars, you really feel the bumps a lot more, but obviously this has been engineered so that you don't, so that rear passengers are just as cosseted as those in the front. And over the bumps and potholes that you find in your typical British downs, such as this, you don't feel them hardly. Just a slight shimmy and shake, almost like a huge ship just on a slightly ripply sea. So then, what's my final verdict on the Rolls-Royce Phantom? Is it crap? Is it all right? Is it good? Or is it quite simply the finest motor car ever made? Well, I think it's quite simply the finest motor car ever made. Toodle pip. Hit the bell icon to turn. Right, I'm going to blow up soon. Come on. <laughs>